Hi everyone, in this video of Accelerated Chess Dragon, we're going to be looking at a game played by Mikhail Tal and Vishwanathan Anand. This was played in the 1989 Youth vs. Veterans Tournament in Cannes, France. And without further ado, let's look at this game. Tal has the white pieces and he plays c4, and now c5 by Anand. So the English symmetrical, knight f3, knight c6, knight c3, and now knight d4. So, kind of a weird move by Anand. He's moving a piece twice in the opening, which is usually not a good thing, because it'll hinder the development of your other pieces. But, if Tal either captures the knight on d4, or if he moves his knight away to avoid the capture, then he will move his piece twice as well. So, he can't really avoid the capture of his knight on f3. So here, e3 by Tal, just trying to kick the knight away. Um, if you capture the knight on d4, then after the simple c takes d4, and now knight b5, e5, obviously this is way better for Anand. He's going to play this move a6, kick the knight away from b5. The knight would have to go to a very bad square, and Tal would just be way worse. So... Not capturing the knight, but rather playing e3, forcing Anand to come to him. An exchange of knights on f3, and now g6, so getting ready to fianchetto the bishop. Thal does the same thing, and both sides fianchetto, d6, so opening this bishop's diagonal up. g3, um, this signals that Thal wants to fianchetto his other bishop as well. Rook to b8, and now bishop g2. So, putting the bishop on the long diagonal. Knight h6. Um, the knight could go to f6, that is true. But, if the knight is on h6, it's not blocking this long bishop's diagonal. Which is quite important. And, now queen d1 was played. Queen d1 was played to get away from moves such as bishop g4, which would get a tempo on the queen. Or, perhaps, maybe just to get the diagonal of this g2 bishop completely to itself. So, queen d1 was played, both sides castle, bishop d7, okay, so this is getting ready to play bishop c6, and once you trade your d7 bishop for his g2 bishop, you're certainly going to have a lot better pieces, as his king side is very weak on the light squares, so a4 was played here. This is a move I don't really like, because it's creating a backwards b3 pawn. And if Anand can eventually take advantage of that, then Tal is going to be extremely weak. a4 was played, bishop c6, and now d4. So, not capturing the bishop on c6. If you do this, then after b takes c6, I mean, Anand will just get the open b-file for his rook. He's putting pressure on the very weak b3 pawn, and you cannot really cover the b-file with something like knight b5 or knight d5 because there's going to be a pawn there. So, of course, you're not going to exchange. And here d4 was played, um, allowing Anand to capture the bishop on g2 rather than him capturing the bishop on c6. And if, if Anand plays a move, let's say, for example, queen c7, then after d5, Tal is going to be pretty satisfied with his face advantage. So, you have to exchange bishops now. Bishop takes g2 was played. King takes g2. You could have also exchanged the pawns on d4, but eventually you would have to exchange the bishops. If you wouldn't want that d5 move to be played. So, an exchange of bishops was played. And now, rook c8. So, getting ready to play this c captures d4 move, which would open up the c file for Black's Rook. And this Rook has a lot of good squares it can go to. It can go to c6 at the moment, and then it could be transferred to a square like b6, and b6 does put a lot of pressure on the b3 pawn. So, queen d3 was played, and now c captures d4. e captures d4, and now knight f5. And this is a very well-timed knight f5, because it's attacking the d4 pawn. d5 was played, and now queen b6, so attacking the b3 pawn. And this b3 pawn is really, really weak. Knight d1, and now we have an exchange of bishops, and now e5. 
okay? So e5 is getting ready to put this knight on the d4 square. And white has only one shot of removing this from happening, and that is to play en passant, which is what Tal did. If you let that pawn stay there with something like rook fe1, for example, then this knight coming into d4 could cause you lots of problems. It's attacking this very, very weak b3 pawn. It can be a target in many different ways, um, so you don't want that to happen, of course. So that's why Tal just took en passant. And now f takes e6 by Anand, rook ad1, rook f6. Um, here, an idea by Anand could be something like e5, and now knight d4. Again, trying to renew the, I, the threat of knight d4. And if the knight comes to d4, then this f3 square is also going to be extremely weak. So if Tal doesn't take care of the threat, maybe the rook can even come into f3 and attack the b3 pawn that way. Rook d2, and now e5. So getting ready to play knight d4. Queen d5 check was played. And after king g7, queen b5. This is the main idea of the queen d5 check. To try trading queens. And here, if Anand accepts the queen trade by playing queen takes b5, then Tal will not capture with the c-pawn and allow something like knight d4 and rook c3 to happen. He will play a takes b5. And after a takes b5, an idea you might see is knight a4, the knight will come to c3, and on d5, it's going to be an extraordinary piece. So, of course, if Anand does not want that to happen, he should not exchange queens. So he didn't. He played queen c7, and here Tal made a mistake. He played the move c5, and c5 does look like a good move, because, tactically, it keeps the material on the board. Because if you play d takes c5, just trying to guard the c5 pawn and guard the b7 pawn, then obviously you lose the rook d7 check and you will lose your queen. But queen takes c5 can be played by Anand here. And after queen takes c5 was played, if you captured the b7 pawn with check, which is what happened, rook c7, and now, despite the fact that Tal did not lose any material, these pieces are somewhat a bit misplaced, and look at the diagonal, um, this a8 h1 diagonal. It's really weak. Queen d5 was played here, and Anna does not want to exchange the pieces, because then he would not have as much counterplay as he did before. Instead, he plays queen b4, um, putting pressure on this d2 rook, and in some cases he's also getting ready to play the move rook c5, and this would force the queen to go to d3 and then rook c3, and then this b3 pawn will be won. So, taking that into consideration, Tal played rook f to d1, defending his rook. And now rook c5, yet again attacking the queen, queen goes to a8, and queen takes b3. Queen takes b3 takes advantage of one very nice point, and that is that Tal cannot capture the a7 pawn and keep the material even. And why is this? Well, if he captures the a7 pawn, okay, this does come with check, but after rook f7, let's say queen a6 here, and now knight to d4, black has a lot of ways of utilizing this very nice a8 h1 diagonal. And this is very important, because if you can manage to land the queen on any square on this long diagonal, then this king is basically done for. Because once the queen reaches there, it's aiming at maybe this h1 square if the king goes to f1, and if the king goes to h3, then it can, you know, it'll be on this f3 square, and you can see how paralyzed white's king would be. So, white of course does not want to venture down that route, and instead he plays knight d3, and here, Anand could play rook c7, and he would liquidate his position, be up a pawn, but instead, he decides to go rook c2. He throws his rook at white's rooks on the d5. And here, again, you can't really capture the pawn on a7 with check because rook f7 and the same idea, knight d4, and the diagonal is extremely weak. Queen e4 instead was played. And with queen e4, Tal is trying to bring some of his pieces back and help his king. And he's mainly guarding this long diagonal because he knows how weak it is. 
rook c4 by Anand, attacking the queen. The queen goes to d5. And here, queen c3, rook to b2 was played, and now rook d4. b7 check. King h6. And here, queen b5 was played, defending the knight. But this doesn't really help white, because he's way, way worse. And no matter what he really does, he's lost. Here, white played queen b5, but if he played something like queen f3 to guard black's next move, it simply wouldn't have worked. After queen b5, black played knight e3 check, and after this, this is completely winning. If you play the move queen f3, trying to stop it, then obviously knight h4 check will be played, and after this, you have to capture the knight. Rook captures f3, and of course, you cannot even capture the rook, because there is simple queen c6 check, and that wins the rook on b7. So, this doesn't help, and there is no other way that you can stop the move knight e3 check. If you play something like rook c1 to try attacking the queen, then the simple queen takes d3, and black is better. After queen b5 was played, knight e3 check, and now Tal is just lost. He played king g1, and Anand played queen c2 here. There's a reason why Tal cannot capture the knight on e3, and that is because if he does, then there is queen c2 check, and after the king goes to the back rank, then you're going to capture the rook with check. But what happens if you play king h3? I'd like to give you all this as a puzzle, and you can try solving this. Okay, so the correct move is rook h4 check. And after this, this is basically lost for Tal. He must capture the rook, and then there's rook f3 check, king g4, and now there is queen g2 checkmate. And it doesn't help if, instead of rook h4 check, g takes h4, you play king takes h4. Because that's still going to lead to checkmate. Queen takes h2 check, king g4, queen h5 is checkmate. So, you cannot take the knight, and if you move the king to h3, then black will just capture the rook, and this is obviously way better for him. So, this leaves you down to h1 and g1. Now, if you go to h1, then you can simply just capture the rook. So, king g1 was played, and you could capture the rook here, that is winning, but instead, Anand decided to play queen c2. Attacking the rook with his queen, and also pressuring this f2 pawn. And if Anand is able to get this rook captures d3 move in, following it up with queen takes f2, it's just going to be winning. So, that's why rook f1, just defending the f2 pawn. But here, Anand simply captured the knight on d3, and after this move was played, Tal actually resigned the game. And... I mean, there are many ways that Tal can play after this, but none of them will work. A main variation that happens is, let's say, queen e8. Black has this queen captures f2 check move. And this is the main move in a lot of variations. If the rook captures the queen, then obviously you're going to play rook d1 check. The rook will block, and now you can choose which rook you want to checkmate. Let's say this rook... Quite a victory for the young 20-year-old Anand. So I hope you all enjoyed the video, and if you have any suggestions or feedback for me, please let me know in the comments section, and stay tuned for more chess.